So in this video I want to give you a quick overview of something I've been working on for a, a while now just in the background in between other projects and uh, it's an idea that um, I uh, thought of quite some time ago now long before I even got a uh, proper real spectrum analyzer to use this with and uh, it uh, came to me uh, back when I was at university some uh, getting on for uh, 18 years ago now and uh, I uh, tried to build as a project a adjustable helical antenna so I could measure uh, the different frequency responses as you compressed the coils on the helical just to see what kind of difference the uh, distance between the coils made to the overall uh, performance and frequency response of an antenna but uh, it didn't really work out well and then a couple of years ago I was uh, watching a uh, video of a uh, fellow YouTuber El, El Paso Tube Amps and uh, he uh, had a couple of uh, uh, antennas there that he was using as a reference and uh, he had a flat ground plane and uh, an adjustable dipole on that ground plane and he also had an adjustable dipole uh, on a cantenna as well to try and get the perfect uh, VSWR and frequency response of uh, that antenna and uh, this is basically what I've come up with uh, you know using those uh, two uh, ideas there has uh, an ultimate idea to create a uh, dipole uh, development kit so this is the stage where I'm at now and I've got a uh, working prototype here in front of me and I've got three uh, dipole antennas here and uh, the longer one here is for uh, dipoles at around the uh, 1 gigahertz mark so with this one you could make uh, dipoles from uh, just below a gigahertz up to about 1.6 1.7 gigahertz this is my uh, 2.4 gigahertz dipole and this will go up to around 2.6 2.7 gigahertz down to about 2.2 uh, gigahertz this is my uh, 5 gigahertz one this will uh, you know you can make prototypes between 6 gigahertz down to uh, 5 gigahertz with this one here but I want to make this one a little bit shorter just so I can expand it a little bit more into uh, the low 6 gigahertz region so you've basically got your three dipole platforms here this one's the uh, 2.4 gigahertz one and uh, here we've got the ground plane and this one is just fixed uh, adjustable here and uh, you can move that make it smaller for different frequencies or make it longer here and here on the uh, driven element you've got a tube here and you can uh, place in these different uh, diameter tubes to make the driven element longer or you can add some of these loading coils here place those in the top like so and you can build up uh, different dipole antennas and experiment with the uh, measurements and uh, the different configurations to uh, get a uh, decent working dipole antenna that possibly uh, as a design you never really thought of before so it gives you that flexibility to prototype your different ideas and uh, you know if you like me some of them will work some of them won't work but this dipole here is a uh, design that I've uh, come up with by using this development kit and I probably would not have come up with these measurements previously uh, the uh, ground plane on this is slightly less than the 25 millimeters it's supposed to be it's at uh, 24 millimeters and the loading coil is different as well and I wouldn't have chosen a loading coil like this and the end driven element here is slightly shorter this tends to be somewhere between uh, 50 60 or 70 millimeters if you ever dissect uh, one that you purchase off eBay for instance and uh, this is quite short this is at uh, 40 millimeters and uh, what it does it makes a uh, nice little compact dipole antenna that uh, you know really does have some uh, decent db to it this uh, produces almost 5 db and uh, you know as i say probably uh, to produce that previously i would have said that it would have to be quite longer probably coming out here as long as my finger 
So playing with this development kit then, I have learnt quite a lot of uh, information on how one of these short bottom fed dipole antennas uh, do work. I uh, previously didn't think that the ground plane on this made uh, the majority of the distance when uh, you know selecting the uh, centre frequency that you wanted it to work at. I thought that most of uh, you know what uh, would have a dramatic effect on the uh, centre frequency would have been to do with the main driven element but uh, I'll take you over to the spectrum analyzer in a minute and I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that and uh, we can set up a uh, short normal bottom fed dipole of around uh, 2.5 uh, dB and then we can add some loading coils and uh, other bits and pieces here to make a slightly longer one and more powerful one and basically the rest of the uh, development kit is just uh, made up of uh, different tubes, uh, brass tubing, it's all made out of brass and uh, brass uh, solid uh, wire here, different uh, diameters, different lengths and I've added to this as I've gone along uh, just playing around with this on the spectrum analyzer myself and uh, basically that's all it is and I picked up this nice little uh, wooden box off eBay and uh, it all fits nicely inside there so let's go over to the spectrum analyzer and I'll show you how you can use this so let's have a look at uh, a few of the experiments we can do with this development kit then and uh, how it can help us better understand the uh, bottom fed dipole then because uh, out of all my videos that I've done over the years this one is the most controversial um, if you have a look in the comments for most of these dipole antennas people will say that uh, the measurements are wrong and uh, it's far too short a quarter wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is around 31 millimeters for instance but uh, i've mentioned in videos previously that uh, because of the way this is arranged it's called a uh, hertzian bottom fed dipole and it's short the mathematics of this are uh, slightly different to other conventional types of antennas so what i thought i'd do first is uh, alter the uh, top driven element here and the ground plane to be 31 millimeters then we can see the kind of response that we're getting on the spectrum analyzer at the moment i've got them extended to the maximum and we're not getting any kind of response in the frequency here on the spectrum analyzer it's set up to sweep from uh, 1 gigahertz to uh, 3 gigahertz centered on 2.4 gigahertz here this spike here is a spike i've mentioned before i think it's a water meter or something like that it's uh, right at the end of 2.4 gigahertz close to 2.5 gigahertz and i think that's a water meter or some kind of smart meter there's not a great deal i can do about that so let's uh, adjust this then to 31 millimeters and see what kind of response we get out on the spectrum analyzer so i'm just going to come in with my ruler and uh, alter this very very carefully so we've got the uh, ground plane at uh, 31 millimeters and the driven element at 31 millimeters so that looks about right so now we'll alter the uh, driven element and that looks about right so let's refresh the spectrum analyzer and we'll see if we get any kind of response so it does look like we're getting a response around here about uh, 1.1 gigahertz so setting the dipole up to uh, 31 millimeters quarter wavelength gets us nowhere near our desired goal of 2.4 gigahertz so let me start measuring it off now then and i'll set it to the more 25 millimeters which i know is uh, you know a dipole operates at around 2.4 gigahertz at uh, 25 millimeters then So let's refresh the spectrum analyzer again and now we've moved that frequency response and we're right over here at about 2.6 gigahertz so it's a little bit too short for the 2.4 gigahertz so what we want to do now is carefully adjust both of these to try and get that response to shift it over here remember this uh, spike here is uh, 2.5 gigahertz so this is 2.4 gigahertz so we want to aim in the middle of that there so I'll just extend the ground plane a little bit and we'll refresh that
and we're starting to get more in line now so I'll just reduce that ground plane a little bit and reduce it a little bit more So I've played around with it and I've got a uh, very good frequency response right over here. So I want to try and bring that over the centre a little bit. So I'll come in with my ruler now and we'll measure the uh, bottom part, the ground plane of this. And uh, the ground plane wants to be extended around another 3 millimetres. The driven element looks to be about okay at 25 millimetres. So let's extend the, the uh, ground plane then a little bit more and see what we can get. So very small touches to this, very small adjustments. So we're beginning to shift it slightly. So we're losing it a little bit now, so let's just measure that again. So let's decrease the driven element a little bit. And we'll try increasing it. So after playing around with it then we're getting the uh, frequency response much closer to where we want it. We've got a nice response there and that uh, response is bang on 2.5 gigahertz. So we're still a little bit too short. So we'll just take a quick measurement. And starting to look okay. The driven element is a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is reduce the driven element slightly just a small amount a little bit more and we've shifted back over here so I'll extend it a little bit more bit more extend the ground plane just a little bit and that looks perfect for 2.4 gigahertz the the uh, biggest uh, frequency that we operate at 2.4 gigahertz is around 2.45 so let me uh, move the center frequency of the spectrum analyzer to 2.45 and then we're almost bang on there so uh, we just want to kind of tweak it a little bit just to get that bang in the middle but uh, if you purchase this antenna and uh, it gave you this kind of frequency response you know you can't really moan at that it's almost bang on to how you want it so that looks almost spot on now so what we can do is uh, come in with our ruler and measure the uh, ground plane of this dipole some people have also said this is uh, probably acting as a ballon and uh, to be quite honest with you it probably is but uh, that's a little bit shorter than what I would have uh, predicted. It's uh, about 23 millimeters, I think there. But the uh, driven element looks a little bit long and it's coming in at uh, 30 millimeters. So what I can do is extend the ballon then and bring the main driven element in a little bit just to uh, even the dipole out. And uh, to be honest with you, before I built this kit, I didn't think the uh, ground plane on this uh, design of dipole played such an important part 
uh, to the uh, frequency response of the antenna I thought uh, uh, 80% of uh, what uh, you know interferes and uh, dictates the frequency response of this antenna would come from the main driven element and the uh, ground plane here or the ballon as some people have said it's called you know does play a much bigger role in that than I thought it previously did so let's just extend this out by about a millimeter then and bring the driven element in by a millimeter just extend the ballon slightly bring that in slightly So not quite as good as a frequency response, so let's see if we can move it back to how we had it. So that looks almost perfect again, in fact I would say that is perfect. So we're coming in at say 24 millimeters for the ground plane I'm coming in at probably 28 millimeters for the driven element then and that is a really good frequency response I'm really happy with that so we could take those measurements take them over to the bench and create a dipole using those measurements give it another test just to double check our measurements and the frequency response and uh, if we did that we'd have a really good working dipole rather than just guessing and uh, using the ruler and uh, a calculator for instance so what we've ended up with then is a dipole that's got a really good frequency response with the uh, bottom ground plane a little bit shorter than normal and the main driven element a little bit longer than normal and uh, I wouldn't have come up with those measurements if I didn't uh, you know hadn't have uh, played around and built this development kit so what I can do now then is build on this dipole that I've got here on this test setup and we can start adding some loading coils to this to extend the dipole just to make a dipole with a uh, little bit more gain at the moment this has got about uh, 2.5 dBm of gain so we can have a longer range dipole antenna that uh, almost doubles that about uh, 4 uh, 0.5 dBm of gain with a uh, loading coil it's uh, more of the uh, longer range one that you find on eBay uh, slightly longer than this kind of dipole so let's put this uh, loading coil on the test setup then and uh, we'll extend the driven element some as well and see what kind of frequency response we get with that so I haven't moved the ground plane then I've just added the loading coil in line with the driven element and another piece of wire just to extend it out here I haven't measured anything with this yet but as you can see really good frequency response there bang on uh, 2.445 gigahertz which is typically the uh, frequency we use in 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi for instance and uh, what I can do now is come in with the ruler and uh, measure this now this uh, the main driven element here to the loading coil is uh, just a tad under 20 five millimeters and if we have a look at the loading coil to the main driven element it's uh, coming in at uh, 50 millimeters which is typical for uh, one of these type of antennas so what I'll do is uh, I'll just bring the main driven element down just a little bit to see what happens there what kind of frequency response we get and reduce it a little bit more So it's not having a great deal of effect on the, the frequency response then. If anything, uh, this dip is not quite as deep and uh, normally that tells me that the uh, VSWR is going up slightly. So I'll extend it out again a little bit more and we should see that dip go down. So extending the main driven element out then is uh, increasing the uh, 
performance of the VSWR so I'm getting a much better VSWR by increasing the driven element so we increase it a little bit more and we're getting a really nice dip now so before we remove this dipole then off the test rig I just want to extend this part out here just to make this a little bit longer just to see what happens and as you can see moving this part here uh, extending it beyond 25 millimeters really shifts that frequency response uh, up the uh, down the spectrum uh, slightly so this is probably around uh, 2.3 uh, 2.3 gigahertz there so uh, you know it's uh, no longer spot on to where we want it so this would be a useless antenna for uh, you know 2.4 gigahertz let's say so let's just move that back again so it's interesting then playing around with this that I found that uh, the ground plane ballon here on the uh, bottom fed dipole does factor in greatly uh, the length of that onto the uh, centre frequency of the finished antenna and also how uh, the length of the main drill up driven element here at the end that seems to factor in more to the VSWR although I'll have to hook this up to the uh, network analyzer and do some uh, you know more in-depth testing but normally it tends to be uh, you know how this drops here tends to uh, indicate a better VSWR and uh, this gap here uh, in the main driven element from the start here to the uh, start of the uh, loading coil that also factors in greatly to the uh, frequency response of the antenna more so than the uh, end of the driven element here on the uh, dipole antenna and that's uh, some things that I never really knew previously and know how spot on you've got to be with your measurements when uh, making an antenna like this just uh, the smallest amount of uh, move there and uh, extend it just half a millimeter does uh, shift the frequency response of the antenna quite a lot but uh, i didn't think that uh, this played such a big part in it i always thought that uh, the end of the driven element here played the greatest part into uh, deciding the frequency response of the antenna but uh, as i've just shown it obviously doesn't it's uh, this part of the antenna here and the ground plane itself so what I'll do next then, I'll add more of these uh, little loading coils then to extend the dipole antenna out to make more of uh, something that operates around 8 dB for a dipole antenna and see what kind of uh, response we get with that. Now because we're adding more loading coils, in between each loading coil I need to add one of these uh, chokes. If you take apart one of the uh, you know longer range dipole antennas that you find on eBay you'll uh, see these uh, built into the construction and we need to have one of these in between each section of loading coil just to keep it on the center frequency so this is the dipole all together with three loading coils then and a choke in between each loading coil and i've just set this up on here and i've just set it to, to the 25 millimeters so we've got 25 millimeters here loading coil 25 millimeters choke 25 millimeters loading coil and so on and so on all the way down to the main driven element which is at 50 millimeters and you can see here on the spectrum analyzer it's virtually um, bang on the uh, frequency response that we want and that's because I have not touched this uh, ground plane ballon here it's uh, exactly how we set it when we did the single dipole antenna and I'll get the ruler and bring it in here and you can see it's about 24 millimeters so definitely uh, this ballon here or ground plane whatever you call it does play a uh, major factor into the frequency response of the antenna now you can see here we've got that uh, nice dip and it goes down all the way and what we can do now is play around with uh, the end of the dipole here just to try and fine tune that uh, dip there just to really get it bang on the frequency response and I've reduced that down a little bit and you can see it has dipped down a little bit more so it will have a really good VSWR and at the end of the day a frequency response like this you know I don't think you can uh, really ask for much more uh, this antenna has got a lot more gain than the first one as I said around 8 dB 
and you can see as well it's a lot more broadband we're getting a uh, really good frequency response into uh, 2.5 gigahertz 2.6 gigahertz here so uh, it's uh, much more of a uh, broadband antenna but uh, it's still quite spot on to where we want it i could do with moving this a little bit over this way for instance so a little bit of fine tuning but uh, you know a development like kit like this can really teach you a lot on how a uh, antenna uh, works at the end of the day so just for comparison then i've got a uh, commercial one off ebay one of these longer range dipole antennas and uh, it's hooked up to the spectrum analyzer and uh, just for comparison i've got the uh, one that we've just had on the uh, system here that's tuned to uh, 2.4 or 2.445 gigahertz and i've lined them up uh, ground plane to ground plane so you can see the difference here and uh, with this antenna it doesn't work very well and uh, here you can see we've got this section here which is at uh, 10 millimeters and uh, we've got this section here and that's 15 millimeters and we've got this extra long loading coil here longer than the other loading coils and i did think that uh, this was because uh, this wavelength here is too short and so is this wavelength and it was kind of balancing it out but you can see here on the spectrum analyzer that the main frequency frequency response for this is uh, way too low it's around 2.3 uh, uh, 2.25 uh, you know gigahertz so it's no good for wi-fi if i move the spectrum analyzer down so we can get a more precise measurement here we are at 2.3 move it down 2.25 so that's where its main frequency response is so the measurements on this ebay dipole antenna are just way out so that wouldn't work well at all for any kind of application at 2.4 gigahertz now as i said i think the problem with this antenna is uh, this section here so what i'm going to do is cut away this uh, loading coil here this part of the antenna basically cut it off here and then solder this back on to the driven element down here and what we should see happening is a much better frequency response at uh, 2.4 gigahertz so i've chopped out this section of the uh, dipole antenna here the one that i purchased off ebay and uh, i've shifted the frequency response now and uh, it's uh, more in line where we want it i've got it centered on 2.4 gigahertz here this at the end here this uh, line here that's 2.5 gigahertz so we're looking for something in the middle of this so it's a little bit too high there but uh, at least you know it'll work much better than uh, the original prior to me chopping this bit out here now as for modifying this anymore so we could shift the uh, main frequency response here for instance uh, there's not a great deal I can do. I've measured these sections here and they are uh, measuring at uh, 27 millimeters, so they're a little bit too long. So the only way I could uh, reduce those would be to chop them out with some uh, uh, side cutters and then solder it all back together again. But that'll just be, you know, a little bit too much and it'd make the antenna a little bit weak as well. But I could also extend the uh, driven element at the end here a little bit just to bring that frequency response down a little bit because we've learned that by uh, just using the development kit you know uh, by doing that we can uh, alter the uh, VSWR so we can bring that down a little bit but at the end of the day this works a little bit better than uh, it did originally and originally this uh, dipole antenna was sold as a uh, 16 or 17 DBI dipole antenna but uh, it's clearly not even if it was working at the correct frequency response it'll only be around 9 db for instance so i hope you found that uh, video interesting i have certainly learnt a lot uh, by playing around with this development kit things that i uh, took for granted and uh, you know things that uh, you know i didn't really uh, know previously some different routes when it comes to designing uh, something like this that i would not have gone down and uh, here's an example of uh, an early version that i uh, came up with when 
uh, you know uh, first designing one of these uh, dipole antennas and uh, this did not work very well now if you follow some of my videos in the past you'll uh, know why it doesn't work very well it's because I came up with this idea here of uh, this uh, ground plane here so you can extend it and uh, retract it and I've got a little screw in there and it just runs along there and I thought that would be a good uh, designed to uh, use you know but uh, unfortunately because it's an antenna when it's extended this slot here uh, starts uh, being an antenna on its own right so it would really mess up any results on the spectrum analyzer so although this looks good and it's a good idea because of the slot I couldn't really use this but uh, as I say as I've been uh, using this um, you know I've really learned a great deal about uh, dipole antennas because uh, these bottom fed hertzian dipole antennas there's not a great deal of information out there on the internet about them and there's not a lot of people who have uh, really taken time to look at them in depth and uh, the different designs of them and some of my uh, early videos from around three years ago now where i've uh, shown you how to make little dipole antennas like this in the past and the uh, slightly more longer range ones people have said why bother when you can buy uh, something like that off ebay for about 50 pence well um since i've been doing this and uh, you know i've got uh, lots of different dipoles in here in the lab the uh, measurements are so vast i've, I've had them at uh, 23 millimeters i've had them up to uh, 28 millimeters i've had rusty ones i've had ones that weren't soldered on just wouldn't work and as you've seen on that dipole on that test there where yeah i had to uh, cut a big chunk out of it just to get it somewhere near the uh, frequency response of what uh, i actually wanted um you really you know it's worthwhile uh, having a go at making something like this yourself at least then you know the measurements are correct and it is going to work so if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up any questions or comments please uh, drop them below and any ideas that you can think of that i can uh, modify this even more make it slightly better then uh, please let me know in the comments um, in some of the earlier prototypes I did try using some of those uh, telescopic aerials but that didn't work out too well i just couldn't get them small enough and still you know had that um, telescopicness to them if you like but uh, you know this is uh, where i'm at so far it's still not a polished uh, finished item there's still some work to do but uh, as i've said i've already learned quite a bit just by playing around with this uh, bit of kit here so again, if you did enjoy it, please give it a uh, thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.